scrimmage tonight at uh, 7. And then uh, we'll start uh, Coach Roberts' regular weekly luncheon on Tuesday the 29th and every Tuesday at noon moving forward. So uh, without further ado, here is the longest tenured head coach in the Southland Conference, Coach Ron Roberts. Yay. They call me old, they call me old again, huh? No. All right. Well, first, uh, I want to thank you guys for coming. I, I appreciate you doing this and covering us. I think anytime we can get you to, again, to cover our football team, I, I, I do appreciate it. Um, you know, we've uh, sitting there about practice 18, I think it is. Um, I think our guys have worked really hard through fall camp. Uh, we're not where we want to be yet. Uh, I think I'm glad we got two weeks left. Uh, we'll tell, I'll be able to tell a lot more after tonight. We've got our scrimmage two, and that's really where you'll see the biggest increase. The biggest jump always in a football team is usually between scrimmage one and scrimmage two. So uh, that's what we want to see tonight. We want to see them, hopefully, I'm hoping that we come out and we see ourselves playing and uh, look game ready. And we're eliminating mistakes and playing the game at the tempo we need to play it at. Um, I, I think we've had a, a, some really good competitions across the board. Uh, two deep's not exact. I mean, probably the first to two deep's probably set. Uh, but, but who is the one, who's the two on several spots? Not real sure on that, you know. Uh, we'll, we'll, most of that, so you can have some questions I know about who's the starting this and that. Uh, you know, some of that could change after tonight, you know. Um, we've had some pretty hefty battles going through camp, and that's always good. We always, anytime you get to a situation where there's more competition, competition gets the tendency to obviously bring out the best in them. And then, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, but our, our guys have really, you know, done an exceptional job of really handling that and working. And, uh, you know, we just want to see them obviously come out there tonight and be able to play the best football they're capable of playing and, and you know, and make those last two weeks adjustments and tighten some things up and get them ready to go. Um, but uh, like I said, their, their effort this offseason, their attitude's been outstanding. Uh, I, I really enjoy this group. I can say that early. Um, I think every group comes in has got to build their own identity and their own team. You know, no matter how many veterans you got, you're still losing seniors. So who's going to be, what's the identity of this team? I think right now we've identified it early. Uh, this team is, is a bunch of workers. They're going to work hard, and uh, they got a great attitude. And uh, I think our chemistry is a little better than it's been in the last two years uh, about the uh, togetherness in that room. Um, I really enjoy my staff. I think we've got some exceptional football coaches and a great job of, of bringing guys along on a pretty rapid time. So uh, for all those reasons, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic right now of where we're going. Um, you know, uh, I'm not making any predictions or that stuff, but I know that we're optimistic about where we're going. and, and uh, I really think this team will continue to grow, and obviously, you know, the first couple of weeks of the season will obviously be huge. But uh, their growth is going to be obviously there. And like, if it is any indication of what they've done through fall camp, so we've done a great job of that. Um, open up any, any questions. Yeah, I think right now, come through fall camp, uh, I think the question mark is probably, uh, you know, obviously defensive line is young and inexperienced. Um, that's probably, you know, that's our biggest question. Until, you know, until they get tested in the game, it's kind of where are they at. Um, I think the guys they're going against are pretty good offensive line. You know, I think we've got some veterans up there. So uh, I think they're getting tested up front. Um, whether we have, but, you know, I'd like to be in a situation where we're too deep and we're playing at least six guys. Um, which six of those are going to be a consistent? That's still, you know, not known. Uh, which six are going to play at, uh, at, the, at, the, at the level we need them to play at? I'm not sure with that. I think we got nine guys fighting for those six jobs, and uh, you know, uh, again, our biggest thing will probably be tonight to kind of see where they're at. Hopefully, the light kicks on for some, and I say, oh, he's arrived, he's here. That's what it's about. You know, we're still we're still in the mode right now. We hadn't hit week two, our scrimmage two, and you're trying to get those question mark players in the can-do category. Those guys that you think he can do it, you hope he can do it, you think he's got everything to do, but that light hadn't kicked yet. Of really, does he understand everything we're asking for him to get done? Do you have an update on Juice yet? Um, Juice is not, well, he's gone limited in call camp. He's done some individual period. He did a little team yesterday. He's not done contact yet, uh, any of that kind of stuff. Um, now, he's, I mean, he's going to be a day by day, and it'll be right after like week one before he gets cleared. Uh, he had surgery in uh, April or May. Yeah, just a meniscus thing. So it just, you know, you got to go through that time period. And, you know, to be honest, I told the trainer I wasn't really excited, but I didn't really didn't need to see him in fall camp. So we're kind of taking him slow and making sure he gets ready to go. He doesn't need to take that beating in fall camp. What was the 
biggest changes seen since this time last year to this time this year? Uh, I would say attitude more than anything. The biggest difference is, is really is our, our, our attitude right there is I think our guys are, I mean, I think they're bought in and they're hungry. Um, I think we've worked our best, and the teams, best teams I've been around is when they've been, uh, been th that type of mentality. You know, you can be as talented as you want, but if you think you've arrived, and you know, that's usually not a good sign. But I like their attitude towards each other. I like their work ethic, how they handle their business, and, and usually the indication with me is, eventually those guys are gonna find a way to get things done. So I think we're a little hungrier. Yeah, uh, individual strengths. Obviously, uh, you know, uh, Donovan's been here. Donovan Isom is, is probably got, he's the, the most experienced because he's been here the longest. Um, you know, he, he may be a little more consistent at this time. Um, but uh, Lorenzo is uh, a, got a great arm. He he obviously adds a dimension of being able to create plays. When things go bad, he can break out of the pocket and make some things happen with himself. He's, uh, you know, he has proven, I guess, in the last scrimmage, he's pretty dynamic. Um, so it's just, uh, you know, with those guys, it's, it's, it's really who's going to lead us the best and, and be able to <coughs> run the offense and get it done. And uh, to me, it's still, it's kind of up and down. You know, one guy, has, one guy has a little better day than the other guy. The next guy, the next guy has a better day. So they're kind of still back and forth, which is good at some points. It's, it's really good at this time because we, we, you want to be able to have two. Um, I think we've got two that can go on, we can go in there and win with. I think if I named either one, I think we'd be ready to go. Uh, but uh, you got to give them the right to opportunity to fight for that job. Yeah, so it's a lot smoother right now. Uh, I mean, it probably starts with our staff. I think we're a little smoother on. Uh, just me in year two, also how which which things I'm going to be able to delegate and put out there, and get guys to handle, and which things I got to you know build do on my own. Um, but uh, I think I'm a lot better. Uh, well, I'm I'm in a lot better situation this year than last year, uh, of saying hey where do, where could I let go on some things and let some other people do it, and um, so uh, uh, that that probably the start of it. Uh, as far as understanding the defense and what we're trying to get done, we got a lot more guys in that situation where they understand what we're trying to do and why we're making certain calls and what we're trying to get done. And that's really what I want them to understand. I want them to not just, under, here's a call, let's go play it, but here's a call, why am I calling this? What do we need to stop? And what do we be looking for when I make that call? What am I thinking? I'm trying to get that related to the other calls. When I make this call, what am I thinking is going to happen? And so they can hopefully be smarter football players on the field and be able to make more better adjustments. Yeah, I think it's work habits more than anything. You know, uh, it's usually in this game. It's not where you start; it's where you finish. Uh, it's so much about attitude and how they conduct themselves. Um, you know, you can start out coming out of the gate strong, but you don't have that those daily work habits to improve. It's tough to be really good in late October, November, when you have to have, the, and that's when you're going to compete for the championship. You know, you can get in, and anybody can start. You know, be on the top uh, uh, early October, but. Uh, you've got to make that progress to keep going because, and, and, and usually in the past, you know, those two or three teams that are actually fighting for it, the, the reason they're fighting for it is they're playing their best football in late October, beginning of November. And, uh, and that's because they're continuously getting better as they go throughout the season. Yeah, I think there's been several. I think, especially when we talk about both our quarterbacks, have done a good job of that. I think Donovan Ice and Lorenzo Nunez was just kind of getting them both in the fight. They're both taking a little bit of ownership of the offense, and that. And then, you know, if it comes, you know, that way, whoever who ends up getting the job or whatever, I really feel a situation we, we, you know, we'll know a little more in the next two weeks. But, you know, I would feel comfortable playing too. But uh, uh, I think we starts there. I think the offensive line. You talk about Michael Vick, Travis Romero. Uh, I think uh, a running back, you know, I think it's really been Eugene Bethea has been a huge, uh, just tremendous how he conducts himself on the field, conducts his business on a day to day business. He's, he's had a phenomenal spring and a phenomenal fall camp. Um, you know, like I talk about the defense side, you know, Jake Giannone, uh, uh, Jeff Williams, Max Lyons, 
the biggest thing is I'm probably just, I'm naming a lot of kids. It would be Courtney Rutledge, Ryan Seegers. There's a lot of, I mean, and that's what you want. You want to be able to say, hey, I'm rattling names off. Yeah. And that's what I try to get across to them is that leaders, obviously, you want, certain leaders are going to lead better in certain situations. You know, certain leaders are going to lead at different times. And when you have it's three or four, you know, uh, it's, it's hard to have that voice spread throughout the locker room and cover the whole field. And you need to have 10 or 12. And usually you're hoping it's going to be your seniors or upperclassmen. But it doesn't have to be. It just has to be guys that are, that are taking care of their business on a day-to-day -day business. And so when they say something, guys respect them. And that's why I say, I don't care if it comes from a freshman, a sophomore, whatever. If you take care of your business, people will respect you when you speak. And uh, I think we've got more guys that are doing that. Um, well, we'll probably linebacker because we bring, I mean, we got a pretty solid group. The three seniors in there leading it. Um, I, I still question our depth on that. Who, you know, are, are, are the backups ready to go and come in and play? Um, so that's the, the next, but those first three up, I think are pretty hands down. There are guys, I mean, Sione, Jake Giannone, and, and Lee Spike. I mean, hands down, they're the guys. They've been consistent how they've conducted their business and taking care of fall camp and off season and everything like that. But that, uh, I feel probably the most solid about that. Uh, DBs, we've got a bunch of them with game experience. Um, you know, so we'll, you know, we'll see. We've got to, you know, some, some of them are new. We've got some new guys. But uh, I think we're really in that position. We, I think we've got 10 that are going to go play. I think we're going to be too deep there that are going to be able to play. And I expect them to see, all see the field in game one. I'm yeah. not sure if you were referring to your players when you tweeted this on social media. Oh, goodness. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, so survival mode to me is when they're just trying to get through practice. You know, it's hot, camp's grueling, and some of them go into that mode where they're just they're trying to survive, and they're not still. They got to get past that point and try to find out how good they can actually be. You're not trying to get through the practice. You're trying to find out how good can I actually be as a player, and the only way you can get through it is not getting through it. But you got to dig deep and you got to be able to expand yourself and be able to get uncomfortable. I think the big thing with our guys this fall camp has been talking about. Being, being comfortable with the uncomfortable. Get used to being uncomfortable. We're going to ask you to play better than you ever have. We're going to ask you to do some things you haven't ever done. You didn't do them in high school. You didn't do them in junior college. You didn't do, you know, if you're a backup, you haven't done them yet. Um, and, and we're going to ask you to, to, to stretch your boundaries and stretch your parameters, probably some places that you've never done. And uh, you got to get out. In order to do that, you got to get out of survival mode. You got to get in the mode that you're here to compete on a daily basis and see, see how good you actually can be. Yeah. I think that's the first. I haven't called on Twitter. No, that's good. I'm fine with it. I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's out there. People are watching. I got you. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the first things I went to. It's like, let me see what Coach is doing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, when we finished the season, I think he got, you know, he was getting 30, roughly 30, 25, 30 carries a game. Because uh, he didn't go through fall camp, I don't know, you know, where he'll be in game, you know, where he's going to be early in the season. Um, I think one thing about it is him not, not going. Uh, we, we've really, I think two guys, a lot of two other guys that really step up. When you talk about Eugene Bethea and Darren Johnson, they've had really exceptional fall camps. I think it really made us stronger as a unit. You know, we got five in there, really, because you got Darius Durall and then a the freshman out of the Shreveport, Delmonte Hall. Um, you know, but uh, Juice, I, you know, again, we're going to have to judge that based off of where is he at in conditioning mode and all those types of things. And really, that's kind of how, how fast does he go in the next two weeks. I'm not really looking for him or any, you know, to have – I'm not looking to give him the ball 40 times in game one, you know. But, uh, uh, oh, you know, because to us, the most normal important thing is game three. We open up conference, and that's what we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dance with the girl that brought us, and we're gonna give it to our best player. Uh, we'll, we'll 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 start mid mid next week. Try to start about ten days out. About ten days out, you start try to put all our focus on UL. And getting ready for them. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, right now, you know, Jawan Dickey is, you know, he led us in receptions last year. He's back. I feel like he's a really, I mean, he's a solid football player. He's a guy that we kind of lean on heavily. But, uh, you know, uh, Nigeria Jackson is a guy that, uh, again, has had a, had a great spring. Uh, you, know, you know, we hope he's going to be that guy that can be able to step up and do those things. Um, I mean, but you got, we have some veterans in those roles. So, you know, we're talking about J.J. Connor and Jake and Graffy. Jake and Graffy's had an incredible fall camp. Um, you know, uh, Juwan uh, uh, Petit is, is another new guy. Um, he's, you know, he's, he's in there mixing. He's going to be able to do some things for us. I know that. If he's not there, it's going to be in a special team, in a ticking game, return game. Um, you know, and he'll, he, he's a guy that probably, as we go through the season, his enroll is going to increase. You know, he's still in the learning stages still of what, what he's got to do. Yeah, I think I think it was one of the the most all back. You know, our long snapping obviously Anthony Freeman will handle the long snapping duties and short snapping duties. Um, if we're like I said, you know, name it today, Dylan Burkhart would probably do our field goals. Um, and I'm not sure on kickoffs yet. I don't think we're ready to name a guy. We really got to see that kind of pan out. Now again, that can change because it's going to be you know, we're charting them every day and where they're doing, but Dylan's had a really, really solid, uh, consistent spring and fall camp. Um, and he does a really good job of getting the ball up high enough early, so it's, it's real hard for people to block it because he gets the ball up quick. Um, but that, that's something that there's still, there's a competition. You know, Jonathan Tatum's competing for the job, and he was the starter before. He's got experience, so um, I, think, you know, I think we've got two there that can do that. Uh, and then when you talk about punter, you know, Ivy Wall uh, has, a, has had a great fall camp again. Um, He's a, a, going to be a sophomore this year, and had a really good freshman campaign. And then uh, I think uh, I think he's really capable of being you know, one of the top punters in this conference. And I loved it to be this year. It'd be nice. Yeah, um, like I said, I think we have numbers there of experienced guys back doing those things. We missed a couple. A couple guys got hurt. Missed a couple days of fall camp. And so that kind of. Kind of set them back a little bit, but uh, I think their their group right now is playing a lot more uh, fundamentally sound, playing a lot more technique. They're doing a lot better job of understanding what we're doing coverage wise. Last year this time we were, I mean, we were pretty green as can be in the back end, so we're totally opposite this year. Right now it's it's a group that's been pretty uh, solid and, and and they've been pretty consistent all the way through fall camp. Uh, there's some stiff competition there. It's come back and forth, really, especially the corners job. It's been a dogfight, you know, between uh, you, know, you see about Ryan Seegers, Maori Ellison, uh, Courtney Rutledge, and Shamar Busby is a new name that's been in there that we think highly of, and those guys have really been competing on a day-to-day -day basis. Coach, what are you seeing in the uh, return game, both kick return and punt return? Yeah, um, punt return right now, uh, probably Max Lyons will be our guy. Just the one, I, I, we trust him a lot. And that's what a lot of punt, punt returns a lot about. It's not just how, how dynamic you are. So you better put a guy back that you trust that's going to make some good decisions. Uh, I'm not, he can be dynamic. He can get the ball out. He can run. Um, so it pro, it's, uh, right now, it would be him. And then kick returner, uh, we're still kind of mixing there who it is. Uh, but uh, Juwan Petit uh, for air is, is one. And then uh, Austin Mitchell, a redshirt freshman out of Plackerman. Uh, again, he's a, he's a guy that uh, uh, he's in the dog fight. He's going to play quite a bit at receiver as well. Probably, he mentioned he's a redshirt freshman, um, but he may be our kick returner as well. Yeah, um, we haven't had any um, like injuries that's going to keep guys out for a long time. You know, we rolled, I mean, pretty good, really. We rolled a couple ankles. Um, uh, you know, stretched some things here and there, but nothing, nothing that's really been, uh, uh, nobody's done. The only one that's done, we, we had coming into the season Taylor Cocker, and he never really got on the field. He had, uh, he hurt his back, so he will not play this year. And he um, uh, ruptured a disc in his back, and so he's, he's done. And so he missed two years, and we thought he was going to come back and have a senior year. And it gets pulled out for him before he ever gets 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 rolling. But um, 
besides that, it's, it's been a really pretty clean fall camp. Are you? Okay. <laughs> How do you feel going to that game? You know, yeah, I mean, games, yeah. Like. Yeah, it's going to be huge. I mean, it, I love the game because it's an in-state game. Are people going to go travel for that being an FBS game? Um, you know, I know they, they feel pretty good about themselves, what they're bringing back this year. And they've been a couple bowl games last year, so they, they've been, you know, pretty consistent on that part of it. Um, we haven't really turned our focus to them yet. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, well, we expect to go down there and compete and we'll see what happens. I just don't make predictions. <laughs> I should stop predicting. Really. <laughs> All right, thank you, Coach. All right, thank you, guys. Appreciate it very much.